I'm overwhelmed already. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> happy to see you. I'm very happy to see you. <laughs> thank and you very much. And thank you so much for the, for the uh, montage. Really? Incredible. You Wonderful. like it? <laughs> it's only 20 minutes uh, from all my life. <laughs> thank yeah. you for sharing yeah. so much of your life with Pleasure. us. Okay, what's that? What's that? Shall, that shall we put this down? down? Just, uh, it's okay? Yeah. I think it's Don't mind. Uh, ooh. <coughs> well, <gasps> what, what was that? Oh, it's okay. Th that it is. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> well, we want to. <laughs> we do want to talk about ballerina, um, and how it really? happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, your conception of creating this film, ballerina, the whole series. <coughs> and um, how you worked on it. First of all, what inspired you to do it and how you worked with uh, Derek Bailey mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the historical mm -hmm. material. Um, well, um, in a second. <laughs> uh, so what what year? What year? Uh, uh, 19. Uh, oh, I'm terrible uh, with years. Uh, uh, 80, 80, 80, 87. 87. Yes, 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 87. Uh, that was it. Ah, yes, it was 1987. And I was in London filming a documentary film uh, directed by English um, director uh, Derek Bailey uh, called uh, In a Class of Her Own. And you showed that here, yes. You did? Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, really? But Nice. Four years ago. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and um, well, uh, producer of BBC came to see the filming during the filming, and uh, Julia Matheson, and she asked me, would I be interested in creating uh, for BBC uh, program series, Valerina, uh, and. Um, and when I started to think what I can show the public to understanding more of our profession and uh, how to become the ballerina and what it takes to, uh, to be a ballerina and what challenges it is and how she polished her profession um, during all her career and how she changed. And uh, well, and I was given carte blanche. I mean, I could do whatever I want to. Uh, and um, I choose the dancers. Uh, and um, I, I narrated, and I have to uh, write narration, which is, was very difficult. Uh, thank you for Dina Makarov. Uh, she helped me. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, what, what else? Ah, I divided um, this um, program into the four parts. Um, four parts. Uh, first, you saw, uh, you just saw body and soul. Then uh, chemistry. You didn't see that, no? Chemistry. Well, uh, I, I have, but not uh, today. Uh, uh, chemistry is uh, partnering, yes? Partnering. In, in partnering. Uh, then... You end uh, this film by saying you're going to speak about partnering, and you have a uh, gleam in your eye. Really? But we look forward to seeing <laughs> that one. <laughs> oh, next year, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then uh, the f third one, great roles, um, in include all the ballet of 19th, classical ballet of 19th century, and some choreographers of 20th century. And the um, last, <coughs> last one is uh, Passing on the Torch. The future ballerinas. Uh, yeah. Right, but uh, it's uh, about tradition, tradition. of uh, yeah. artists to passing on their knowledge, their profession to younger generation. 
And also, I took an interview uh, from, uh, from Anthony Tudor, uh, fr uh, Sir Frederick Ashton, and, uh, and in program also talk and Robbins talk and uh, uh, and Macmillan uh, in Ashton. Well, huh? The whole series worked out so well. It won an Emmy. It didn't win the Emmy, but it was nominated for an Emmy. Oh the yeah, I, the don't four know, parts. I remember. <laughs> yeah, which I mentioned to the but audience. But I didn't but win. Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what one. But um, how did you choose the uh, the ballerinas? How did you choose them? And did you, were you acquainted with some of them or? Oh well, some of uh, I know, uh, like. For example, Marcia Haida, I know very well, and Carla Fracci, um, and I admire their art uh, and artistry. And uh, I also want to invite Russian ballerinas, but that time was impossible. And, uh, you know, the, you know <laughs> what time it was. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, but, Nevertheless, Maya Plisetska accepted, uh, despite uh, all the risks, and which I am very grateful to her. Um, and uh, also I presented uh, French ballet, uh, fra pa Paris opera, Platel, and young, young Sylvie Guillem. She yeah. just joined at that point, uh, right, the Paris right, opera. Right, right, right. And I see it was a great future for her. Right. That, that, yeah. And uh, Virginia Johnson from Theatre of uh, Harlem. She was already ballerina, uh, well, uh, very well known. And what yeah. else? Well, no, uh, but s some of what I wanted to talk about is, you know, your collaborations with some of the choreographers, for example, Jerome Robbins, huh. who I think, mm -hmm. you know, one of your best collaborations. Absolutely, see, absolutely. Is, uh, other dances, and mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like an ideal ballet for you. And mm -hmm. I wondered whether he ever thought about doing something else for you, or whether he. Oh did. yes, yes. We talk with Jerry about it. I had an idea, maybe, maybe, maybe crazy idea, but uh, it uh, to I want to dance, dance of Salome, Seven Veils, on the ba based on the inspired by. Um, beautiful French symbolist painter Gustave Moreau. Mm. Uh, remember? Yeah. Remember that yeah, painting? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And he, uh, Jerry was very excited, and he said, "Well, but uh, you have to be Machiave Machiavelli to make this happen, because I suppose." Uh, he was uh, with, um, with Balanchine Ballet, and I uh, was with ABT. Aha. Uh -huh. You Conflict understand? Conflict of yeah? interest. <laughs> uh, right. And, uh, but uh, happily, luckily, lucky I am, uh, it was opportunity. You know, uh, remember Genia, Evgenia Dole, philanthropist in my dear, dear friend, and uh, it was 1976, because it was my wedding. And she came to me and said, oh, I have a wonderful present for you, wedding present for you. Said, okay, you will, uh, you will be very happy. And uh, it was happened, uh, was gala benefit for the Lincoln Center uh, Library uh, dance collection. And she asked Jerry to create for me something. Uh, and it is, and he agreed. It was neutral territory. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and Misha Barishnikov accepted. That's, and uh, Henri an, Dole, husband of Jenny, uh, you, he gave me away in the Russian church, at Orthodox church during my wedding. C wedding t ceremony. And, uh, so it was Salome that was d it, it was done Salome. that one time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For the for this it event, it was uh, just an idea. Uh -huh. And but uh, I remember Jerry 
a few months before he passed away, he came to my, my place for dinner. And he said, I never go anymore, uh, but I, I want to come to you. And we had a fantastic dinner. It's a fantastic, fantastic evening. What? Evening. Evening. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wonderful. Um, well, some of your most successful collaborations, I think, were in London uh, in the 70s with the Royal. Mm -hmm. And um, so it began in the 70s, continued through 1989. And so which ballets and which partners stand out in yeah. your memory? It's happened in uh, 1971 when his madam, uh, Ninette de Valois, invited me for the uh, gala uh, for the queen uh, in the Royal Ballet. And, uh, and I uh, hurt myself, I injured myself uh, during the rehearsal, so I couldn't dance up here. And um, seven, next, next year I was invited by Royal Ballet uh, as a permanent guest artist. And here we started. And uh, permanent guest artist is that what you said? Huh? Did you say permanent? Permanent. Permanent. Uh huh. Uh huh. Permanent. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You don't know what it means? No. <laughs> so I invited I time to time, <laughs> regularly. That's what. Uh huh. Not just at random, but regularly. And um, what else? Uh, hmm. And. Uh, First, my, de my debut was in Kenneth Macmillan, uh, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, I danced, and my partner was, guess who? Rodolphe yeah. Durif. Uh. Yeah, was very good. How did that go? Uh, I, uh, that okay. time was very good, yeah. yeah. Um, then what about Anthony ne Dow? The next year was Manon with Anthony Dow, who is a fantastic partner. And we had a great, great partnership, uh, great chemistry in the, uh, all these years, uh, till 89, yeah? Uh, in 89, when I danced with him. And what made him so special? It what? is right chemistry. Just and it was chemistry. so real on stage. Was uh, We both were uh, like um, living the life on stage. Um, and when, when I danced uh, all Macmillan ballets, uh, even Elite in Compassion, and uh, uh, particularly I love Son of the Earth by Mahler. Mm. And it's so profound work, and it's really heartbreaking. And uh, then I, I did also Sir um, Anthony um, Ashton. Uh, a month in the country. Month in the country. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> the funny things, but one of critics said, uh, tried to criticize me. Uh, month in the country, you know, on Turgen based on Turgenev, Turgenev. Russian, mm -hmm. Russian play. Um, and he said, she was too Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something uh, like uh, being too uh, Russian? <laughs> <laughs> but instead of being English. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but uh, I took that as a compliment. <laughs> good, good. And what else? Now uh, I, want, I want to talk about something else, which is, um, you know, when you, when you took the decision to stay in London in 1970, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you left everything behind, speaking of Russia, I mean, your family and so forth, it must have been a difficult time. But then in 1989, uh, I guess it was the beginning of Gorbachev Perestroika, you were invited. The beginning. The, beginning, the start. You, you were uh, invited to Leningrad and you were away for like 19 years and you danced at the Kirov and I think you were the first artistic exile to be invited back. So how amazing was that? What was that like going back after so many years? Ooh, it's truly, truly, truly dramatic and uh, very emotional. You know, I didn't see my mother, my family, my friends, my colleagues uh, for 19 years. And 
they're going to judge me because they didn't know anything about me because I was uh, totally absent from um, any books, any museum, any photos was, uh, uh, my films were destroyed and even I tried to, you know, when Skirov was on the tour, like in Paris, I tried to go and see them, but they just for, forbidden to meet me. So, so like you didn't exist? Like I didn't exist, totally. Uh, I mean, like I didn't live there, I didn't dance there, and, uh, well, and uh, so I <laughs> it was two weeks, uh, but uh, the reception what they gave me, my God, was so overwhelming. I mean, it's, uh, I don't have a word to describe it because it was really, really, uh, my mother cried, I cried on the stage after the performance and she was sitting on the Tsar Loge, you know, there was no normally Tsar uh, sitting there. And, uh, and the wars, and people, some some of my friends came from the every corner of Russia, you know, and to see, just to see me. To, uh, so a it was a two weeks <laughs> and uh, like a lifetime, actually. Mm. Yeah. A very emotional oh. experience, and unforgettable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, going back to the ballerina idea, uh, you say in the film that somewhere, that she needs to fill the space, the space with her individuality, her personality. Oh yeah. Now, so mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering, uh, you know, you can have the best schooling, the best schooling, but uh, maybe schooling doesn't guarantee that you can do that. So is it is it inborn, this ability, or can it be developed? Mm. Uh. What do you think? Well, I think, uh, f first of all, uh, you have to have a base, uh, fundament, uh, so it's a good schooling. You have to have that to become a ballerina. And, uh, but even if you're born with the perfect body, with the good line and uh, everything, good, Mm. Promising. Um, I think it's not enough. It just need um, some uh, divine calling, then something uh -huh. from heaven uh, called vocation. Yeah, vocation. Yeah, that's right. that's right. a good word. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, the Vaganova training that you had, which you did in six years instead of nine, because you started a bit Experimental. late. Experimental. Right? I'm experiment. You're exper <laughs> What an experiment. <laughs> um, it, do you think it's good for all uh, ballets, uh, even contemporary, this training? Because some people say, well, this training is only for super classical ballet. What do you think? You think, for mm -hmm. you, obviously, mm -hmm. Well, it works. I, worked. I, I'm not really agree with you, you uh, but you don't agree uh, that that works. Well, I, I I explain why. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I still think uh, Vaganova system uh, is most complete. Yeah. Uh, but maybe is not complete enough. <laughs> and uh, uh, well, yeah. You know, the, I think this question is passé now because time has changed. And <laughs> you can so see uh, from Vaganova uh, school, uh, you know, look at Kandaurova, you know the dancer Kandaurova. Ka how is she dancing yeah. fa Forsyth, for example? Or uh, Vishnyova doing uh, uh, so adventurous oh, well, thing, uh, avant-garde ballets. And very successfully. Question. That was my question. Yes. So, you're, so you think it is fine for contemporary ballet? Well, yes, but yes. it needs the courage, it needs to adjustment, of course sure. adjustment, because uh, during the all this cold, cold war and Iron Curtain is, uh, um, is government censors is just not uh, 
uh, was really uh, not allowed any experiment. Uh, so the choreographer didn't see the, how they develop uh, dancing in the West. Uh, and uh, only the fighters choreographer, like Leonid Jakobson, Leite Grigorovich, uh, they succeeded. Uh, but, and I was lucky to work with Jakobson. Yes. Uh, that's, he prepared my body for the modern language, more or less. But still I have to adjust when I came. Yeah. He, uh, it took time for me. Uh, but uh, actually yeah. that's why I came to the West. Right. You see? Well, and uh, with six battalions, you say? I forgot. Yeah. Well, when, when, when uh, you were in Leningrad, who, who were the dancers who, the ballerinas who inspired you the most? Mm -hmm. either living or, or dead, the time that you were there? Well, I mostly was inspired, my idol was Ulanova, Spitsirtseva, uh, but actually I admire Maya Plisetska very much. Yeah, even uh, f different school, different, different, well, but, uh, yeah? The school or not, but the talent we from, we that's the calling from heaven, you know, yeah. she had it. We, we lost know. her last year, so, uh, yeah, yeah, say something what about her. I, I think she, her, uh, it's, uh, She's unique. She has um, such a power, nature power, mm -hmm. uh, femininity, and the free spirit, totally free spirit, and the magnetism. It makes her really phenomenon. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very yeah, no, sad. I agree completely. Very sad. Very sad. We also uh, lost Violet Verdi just oh, a yes, few days yes, ago. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, ah, at, mm -hmm. uh, at the time of the Kennedy Center Awards, there was a Washington Post interview, very good one, with you. Yeah, I remember. And um, it described your home in California with the birch trees and even a Russian Orthodox uh, chapel. Yes, um, yes. So it seemed to me like you, maybe you sort of recreated a part of your Russian life in America. So does that mean you still miss your homeland a lot? Or well, it's partly uh, nostalgic, but uh, it's kind of positive nostalgic <laughs> nostalgia. It's not melancholic, no. Um, I love my country, Napa Valley country house. And uh, you have a dance studio there, no? If Pardon? Do you have a dance? Oh studio? yeah, I have a, dance, a small dance studio with very good floor. Uh, oh, and, uh, yeah. And so do you? Do you? Well, do that's you how I, I. You work out. Work out actually till now. Still. Yeah, very much so. You're wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it helps, mm -hmm. uh, and it helps for, for the, my shape, uh, to uh, because I have to show the when I coach show the steps. Uh, so be acceptable <laughs> for that, and, uh, and otherwise just for the health. Right. So would you say now that there is a typical day that you could describe in your life, or is there such a thing as a typical day? I hear you enjoy playing chess. Oof, even that, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did my research. <laughs> And yeah, you uh, know Russians like church. Uh, yeah, uh, like, like, they uh, like chess. that too. Play, they like play both. chess. They yeah, like <laughs> play ch chess. They like chess. Uh, do you think mental exercise is as important as physical to keep your mind? It's a very good combination. Has to be. You know, it's not enough if you are not mentally involved in your profession, and not enough if you are physically not good. So it's a, a harmony. That's what's best, probably. Now, uh, you're far from retired, from what I hear, because I want to hear about you have some projects coming up, uh, plans, projects a few. for this year. A few, a few yeah. maybe you can share with us. Yeah. Well, uh, just now, uh, I've been asked uh, to do La uh, Bayadere uh, in China. La Bayadere in China? <laughs> yes, yeah. Wow. So I did the. Uh, a few years ago, I did the Swan Lake uh, stage, and now they ask by there. Uh, and then reviving 
everywhere by their reviving, like Amsterdam going to be also in the autumn. And uh, uh, I just come back from freezing uh, Helsinki. Helsinki. <laughs> to freezing New York. <laughs> Well, and then uh, I have to, in April, in April, yeah, I have to do, I, mm, I promised to do uh, shades for North Carolina uh, University of Art. Oh. And Susan Joffe, the director now, uh -huh. so she asks me to do that. It will be a new experience for me. And, um, and uh, also the, the scenery, the backdrop was painted by students. Uh, oh, really? of, of that university, yes, in costume too. Uh -huh. And um, I look forward that. So you have yeah. lots of things on the, on the agenda. Uh, yeah, I even forget what else. Right. Yeah. Now, if you were advising uh, from your experience in dance world and as an actress, which we have examples of your acting here today, mm. um, what would you, uh, an aspiring dancer with some dramatic gifts as well as, what would you, what kind of advice would you give? Mm. Um, well, mm. I just can suggest to <laughs> never, suggest. never stop develop yourself. Um, no. uh, be ready for any ex experiment, experience. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, well, I, I took, it helps me enormously uh, for the uh, literature, you know, the lots of inspiration. No, first, of course, it's from Russian literature, national treasures, and then uh, uh, French ones. I was at Flaubert, Maupassant, Hugo, uh, all, yes. it was Stendhal, it was my table, Your base. Tab table books. Yeah. And uh, then visual arts, yes. Visual arts helps a lot. Mm -hmm. It's more closer to, to movement. You know. and, uh, and just don't forget to do class every day. Well, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Now, you've traveled a great deal, a great deal. If you had to pick your favorite city, what would it be? What, number one city, do you think? Well, uh, first of all, I think it's, it's not only one city, it's, uh, I love uh, St. Petersburg, I love uh, London, Paris, Rome, mm. and... Uh, Me too. Yeah? Yes. yes. Yeah. And, uh, but actually I prefer countryside. You prefer countryside? Yeah, uh -huh. particularly when I don't work, I yeah. try nature. Really love nature, you know. And uh, it, uh, the, it was an uh, interview uh, during the Cold War. Um, the uh, Russian magazine, uh, no, journal um, called Continent, uh, took interview with me. And they uh, asked me, if it's, uh, imagine if it's happened, now you can return to Russia, because I never in my head was uh, thinking I could return to uh, Russia. Uh, never occur my mind, uh, but uh, where are you, go you going first, uh, if it will be such an opportunity? I said, probably from airport to the forest. They <laughs> yeah, like that answer, actually. That's a <laughs> it's, it's underground magazine, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, this last question that, that I asked you brings up something. Um, Something you said in one of your documentaries. I think it was Great Railway Journeys. That, that's what it was. And um, it, it sort of, it had to do with how you see yourself in the world. And maybe we can end this conversation. Uh, I can read the quote, which seems to sum up your view of yourself as an artist. So I'll, I'll just read it. Please do. Okay? Please do. Okay? So, here, here it goes. As an artist, I've never felt constrained, defined, or excluded by geographical boundaries. Art is universal. It speaks no single language, nor does it acknowledge any single nationality. 
My life as a ballerina crossed all frontiers, and my dance floor was the world itself. I've been fortunate to have lived in both East and West, to have experienced separate cultures and been nourished by different influences. I am intensely proud to be Russian. At the same time, I feel international. Now, does that still, do you agree with this? Absolutely. Still? Yes. You do? Yes. Good. W what okay, well, what are you going to uh, say? <laughs> <laughs> you don't disagree. But I just thought that that really told a lot about you, what you say here. Yeah. So It's true. I think we end on this note, and I thank you so much for coming to Dance on Camera. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs>